Welcome back to Chips and Salsa, where we talk about uh, security at Intel. I'm Jerry. I'm Crobe. Hey, Crobe, today uh, we have Bill Penner. Uh, oh, I love that guy. Yeah, he's one of our senior principal engineers here. And folks may uh, recall some you know, stories about data leaks from uh, various different sources, uh, but basically the, the key to the story there, haha, key, was that some Intel signing keys were leaked. Uh-huh. Um, and good news is that all of these Intel keys that we've identified are what we call a pre-production or a test key um, and not used in production, at least by Intel. Uh, so Bill is joining us today to talk about a paper we just published that kind of uh, you know helps customers understand what all of these keys are, who is generating which key, if it's Intel or you know the original equipment manufacturer, um, and what they should know about uh, the keys they may have seen in these stories. So, right. Why don't we bring Bill on and uh, get a little more info about this paper? Oh, we're. Very excited to have friend of the show, Bill Penner, back. Bill, could you maybe introduce yourself and talk about your role here at Intel? Sure. First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm Bill Penner. I'm a senior principal engineer here at Intel, and I spend my time and effort generally working on analyzing and debugging system issues that, that are encountered, this being one of them. Yeah, and uh, Bill... Today, we uh, published a paper titled Introduction to Key Usage in Integrated Firmware Images, or IFWIs. Uh, what, what, what does this paper cover? What's the scope of it? Yeah, so the paper covers the role of keys as they're used within a uh, integrated firmware uh, image. And, and that's another way of saying bias. So uh, what the paper talks about are the security elements that are built within the firmware to protect that firmware from being abused. And we we have this concept that we call chain of trust. And this is what these keys are being used for that have been discussed in in these articles. And it's really about uh, hardware being able to transition to software safely and pieces of software transferring to the next piece of software safely. And they use these keys as a way of verifying that the software is a correct stuff to run. Um, so the paper talks about uh, these keys and with some recommendations on how to handle the keys, you know, what you need to worry about and some suggestions about, you know, how to ma- how to keep them safe. Hmm. Well, um, you, you may recall uh, earlier this summer, we had some researchers that claimed that uh, leaked Intel keys could cause billions of computer systems to be vulnerable. Um, when you investigated these claims, what were your findings? Yeah, so this is kind of a uh, exaggerated, well, let's just say it's an exaggerated statement. Um, mm-hmm. The These reported uh, leaked keys were actually provided uh, to our OEMs as pre-production test keys to demonstrate how to build the firmware in the first place. So mm-hmm. the, the process of building firmware is, is a little bit complex. And so we give them kind of a script that they can run through and see what how the process works. And we provided some keys to go with those scripts. So these were never intended to be in platform systems. And uh, you know the, what's intended here is, is that once they understand how to put the firmware together and when they are ready to start building the production firmware, they would go through and generate all of their own keys and replace them. So it, it's you know these Intel keys that were distributed we're really only demonstration uh, values. So the OEM is supposed to replace all of them with their own set of keys so that they can control their platform. Hmm. Yeah, and we, and we saw you know some related media stories um, where researchers uh, and the media stories may have been somewhat inaccurate in describing some of the key usages in, in those uh, stories. So does this paper kind of uh, address some of those inaccuracies? Yes, that's that's what the intent of the paper is. And, uh, you know, one of the things that happened was that since we create since we distributed, you know, the set of test keys and we found that a few OEMs had made the mistake and continued to use those keys in their firmware. Uh, but because, you know, it tended that some of these keys showed up for the same function across multiple platforms, there were some really broad assumptions made 
about those keys having some really special capability, but that isn't the case. Uh, the other reference that uh, was made was this thing called orange debug. Uh, this is an Intel term that we use internally to say these are capabilities that we uh, enable the uh, OEM to be able to use. And it, it's not so much about enabling other than giving them the capability to have a key so if they have a platform that they want to debug, uh, they can enable this orange mode mm -hmm. and that allows them to bypass certain controls within their firmware, which is already underneath their control in the first place, let's say. So, um, you know, it's, it's up to the OEM also to decide what key value they're actually going to use for that. So this, the concept of the orange debug key uh, isn't real. It's, it's okay. more of a demonstration case. That's interesting. I'm, I'm, thank you for explaining that. Uh, we also saw several stories stating that Intel boot guard keys were compromised. Could you maybe clarify how those keys are generated and what's the actual exposure to customers? Yeah, there's there's a as I was talking earlier, this chain of trust. Mm -hmm. and the concept is is that it starts from hardware, and that hardware contains what we refer to as a hash. So that's a, a special value. Uh, of that's calculated from the public key and it's stored in hardware. So when the system starts up, it pulls out the information of that uh, hash and it's stored in what we call uh, field programmable fuses. So they're one-time programmable fuses. And this is to make sure that somebody isn't able to break that chain of trust going from hardware to the initial firmware. Uh, and, and by the way, that key and the hash is all developed by the OEM. So they mm -hmm. pick their own values. You know, Intel doesn't know anything about the value. Uh, the customer uh, fuses that into the system. And when it boots, it starts running the firmware. It double checks against the hash value that's in hardware. That's a little complica complicated, but, uh, and then once you've established that the key is valid, for boot guard, as an example, for the boot guard data, then you can start using the data um, that was validated by it. Inside that are some more keys, and those keys are then used to validate the next piece of software. And so this is what establishes the chain of trust and ensures that all of the software is the software that was intended when the platform was manufactured. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, Bill, there, <clears throat> there were a lot of stories. There some inaccuracies there that may have led customers to believe that uh, their systems were at risk. Uh, some systems may be at risk. Um, what should customers do if they suspect that, or if they read a story that listed uh, a system they may own, if, if they... Yeah, if you have that. reason to suspect that your platform may be vulnerable uh, to one of these issues, uh, there are some scanning tools out there as an example that will attempt to look for these known um, test keys. And if it finds it, it might give you an alert or a notification that your firmware contains them. But either way, if, if you run into a case where you are uh, needing more information on, on how to deal with an issue, uh, contact your OEM, so uh, your whoever manufactured your platform, and they should be able to give you some help. Makes sense. Yeah, and definitely, uh, Customers should not install uh, firmware updates from sources they don't know. They should make sure that they're from their OEM. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's a good double check. Even if you are potentially vulnerable, as long as you ensure that all the firmware that you are downloading to install on your system actually came from the valid site, uh, you should be safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, Bill, thanks for joining us on the show today. Uh, link, we'll put a link below here to the uh, to the paper. Um, and the blog post that we did. And uh, if customers have questions, reach out to their Intel representative uh, for, uh, for more information. So again, thanks, Bill. And we'll see Thank you next you. time. Thank you, Bill. Okay. We'll see you. Hey, great. Wow. That, I always love talking with Bill. And I really enjoyed reading that paper, um, Introduction to Key Usage and Integrated Firmware Images, which I think you're going to post the yeah. link, right? Yep. Yeah, Bill's great. Awesome to work with. And uh, thank you, Bill, for coming on the show. And that's it for this episode of Chips and Salsa. We'll see you next time. Later. Later.